Good evening everyone, or it might be morning or afternoon, not sure where you're calling in from, but I'm in the northeast of Victoria in Australia time and Joe has just joined us. Wonderful to see you here, Joe. Uh, it's with great pleasure that we present our third session for our opening day of Aussie Live 2015 and Vanessa Crouch or Hi Ness, <laughs> as I call her, is presenting for us today the web tools for inquiry learning. Now Ness is one of our team and has, worked, has been working tirelessly behind the scenes to get everything ready for tonight. So for that I'm really, really grateful. Along with the rest of the team, we have been putting the Aussie Live out to everyone uh, now for, for two years. And prior to that, we were all involved with the Australia E-Series and there are several webinars still happening with those on a regular basis on Thursday evenings. So we were very proud of what we do. I'm just going to move to the slide that thanks our sponsors and our supporters. So we want to say thank you especially to the Learning Revolution. Uh, Steve Hargaden is our patron in the United States and we owe a lot to him as well as to Blackboard Collaborate for the use of their rooms. So welcome to everyone. You're just in time to hear Ness and I'm going to move swiftly to her first slides. You might like to very quickly drag one of these markers, a, a smiley face or a world, onto the map to show Ness where you are currently. And other than that, you can certainly put your location into the text chat as we go. And I know that Ness will be really happy to see your comments and questions in the text chat as we move along. So we've got lots of Aussies here for you tonight, Ness. That's great to see. And Jodie is a little bit further north up in Queensland and lovely to see that Jodie's put her location into her profile name. So let's move on to listen to Ness as we talk about web tools for inquiry learning. And I, I'm sure that you want to introduce yourself a little deeper than I have tonight, Ness. So I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks, Carol. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. It's great to see some familiar faces and some new faces. So welcome, everyone. I'm a fairly seasoned presenter. I work with Shingo on Thursday nights to facilitate Community Connect. Uh, so I'm very used to um, being in these Blackboard Collaborate rooms and presenting. Uh, I am a primary school teacher. Uh, I'm currently working in a small school small Catholic school in northern New South Wales where I am a leader of pedagogy and leader of curriculum. Um, oh, the volume needs to go up, sure. Okay, that's as far as it goes, so I hope you can hear me. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm a leader of pedagogy and leader of curriculum. This year I'm actually not teaching a class, which is quite interesting. Uh, but I'm really enjoying being able to focus on helping teachers improve their teaching. Okay, so um, when we're talking inquiry, inquiry learning, there are actually lots and lots of different ways to think about inquiry. Um, as you can see, I've got five possibilities. Some of these are fairly science-based inquiry processes. Some of them are less specific. So if you um, have a look, we've got Sophie Murphy presenting on Sunday night about the solo taxonomy. Um, the five E's is generally used in science, but uh, can be used at any time. Um, I, I personally, when I'm... Um, teaching the inquiry process in my class, I tend to use the Cass Modoc inquiry process model, mainly because it's the model that I'm most familiar with uh, and I have used regularly and had a little bit of training in working in um, PYP schools. For me, it doesn't really matter which process you use because they're all very similar and they all have the same uh, philosophy behind them and that philosophy is 
giving children or learners, not necessarily children, learner skills to be able to learn for themselves. Okay, as I said, the uh, inquiry model that I'm focused on tonight and I'm presenting tools for is the CAF model inquiry, CAF Murdoch inquiry process model. So she divides her process into different parts. There's the tuning in phase, the finding out and sorting out phase, going further, making connections taking action and reflection and I'll talk about those in a little bit more detail as we look at each part. Um, before we get um, too much further, at the top of the pa uh, participant panel you'll see four little buttons and on the right hand side there's one that's got a little tick in it and I'd just like you to choose yes or no if you have used an inquiry model either in teaching or in, um, in your teaching or your, your learning area that you work in. Okay, okay that's, that's interesting. Well, hopefully those people that said no, you'll learn a little bit more tonight. Great. Let's get a little bit of background. Okay, so the tuning in phase of, of the Kath Murdoch model is where you're trying to develop and engage children, uh, the children, I keep saying children because that's who I usually work with. Um, it's where you engage the learner in bringing what they already know, so their prior knowledge, into um, in with what it is you want them to start learning about. So what I have used, and um, as I was sitting here this afternoon thinking of uh, what I was doing tonight, I actually thought of a few other different tools I use. So of course you've got the old reliable YouTube. Um, another one that I'm just typing in now, uh, and I will try and make it a little bit larger, uh, is Slidely. It's become one of my you are more favourite um, tools. Cooperating with me at the moment. Um, Slidely is a really great little tool. Um, Thinglink, uh, I really love. It is a very, very useful tool for gathering information together and, and bringing ideas together. And I'm actually going to take you out to a web tour in a second and show you a thing link. Another option is Zemo, which is a, a video tool, uh, a video space, similar to YouTube in some ways. Uh, and there is also things like Educanon, which is another video, interactive video space. It's only relatively new. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, I do recommend you have a little look because it's quite interesting. Blend space, which is a space where you can go um, that, that has recently been developed uh, with the idea of blended learning um, and, and gives you some resources that can help you connect your students to ideas. And obviously on the left hand side here we've got our good old friend Wikipedia. So what I am going to do now is just briefly take this out onto a web tour so I can show you one of the thing links that I have created and used with my class. So this will take a little minute to appear uh, and I just like a little smiley face or a um, thumbs up or Yes, in the in the text chat when you can see my shared screen. Okay, great, thanks, Carol. Okay, so with a with a thing link, basically what you're doing is you are choosing a photo. So this thing link was created to help tune my students into uh, the idea of needs and wants and what our impact on the earth is. So I've just um, 
through PingLink you can search um, the images and you can use them through the uh, Creative Commons licenses. And what you do is you may notice that at times, uh, at the moment, hopefully, you can see that there is just the picture of the Earth with Australia on it. And now you should be able to see a couple of little icons have popped up. There's one that's a little red play button, one that's an image, an information, an information, and the information. So what these are, uh, these are little little tags. Uh, so what I, uh, all I have done there, so I've added a tag that is a video of time lapse of the human impact on Earth so far. Uh, here, hi Ben, welcome to the session. Um, here we have uh, an in, a slideshow of uh, human impact on Earth's surface. This is a website and information for kids, information website for kids. And these are all direct links. So what I got, how I used this was I gave my students, I embedded this into our class web page and I said, you've got 10 minutes with a partner to explore some of these uh, links that I've got on here. And at the end we're going to talk about what you see and what you think. What I really love about ThingLink is you can actually use it not just as a teacher tool, but as a, an, a tool for students to use. So I'm just going to go into, I think it's in my stream actually, sorry, like that, stream, um, and show you an assessment that some of my students produced to show their understanding of the geography of Australia. So this is, is uh, no longer a tuning in activity. I just thought since I was here I'd show you. This is actually a, a final. Hi Shambles, welcome. This is a, 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 an assessment which comes a bit later in the process and we'll talk about it again then. So all the students were asked to do is if they, they needed to name the state, they needed to name and hopefully position correctly the capital city and if they were able to find other information or identify other places of importance in Australia. So you can see these students have identified the Great Barrier Reef. They found a little video about Uluru. So it's a great little tool. Come back to the room now. Um, now Slidely is one of the slowly become, or not slowly, rather quickly becoming one of my favourite tuning in activities. And I think it is because it is so simple to use. In less than five minutes, you can create something wonderful that really can be used, a visual, very visual thing to teach children or tune them in to a topic. Um, all you have to do if you type in slide.ly is um, basically sign up, type in a, a, for example, if you're wanting to learn about Australian landscapes, type in the Australian landscape, it will find a bunch of photos or you can upload your own and then find some music to go with it. Press a button to, to publish it and Bob's your uncle. It's, it's really fantastic and very, very simple to use. I used that last year as a tune in to a poetry unit about Australia. It was really successful. The visuals were just fantastic. Okay, so next up we have the finding out part of the inquiry process. And this is really the part where after the students have tuned in and developed some questions around what they want to learn about, um, this is where they have to find their answers. So to be able to find those answers, they need lots and lots of places to go to. Once again, you've got your, your good old favourites like uh, Wikispaces, I mean, sorry, not the Spaces, Wikipedia, uh, Blend space, space again, good old Google, can't go far without Google, the World Wide Web just in general. Um, but then there's also some other tools that you can use that can help direct the children a little bit better and help them start gathering some of that information they need to, to keep to, to share. So, for example, I've got Ask an Expert. Um, whether that be through a website or 
through something like Twitter or Skype, um, talk to someone who is an expert in the topic and find out your answers from there. Uh, whether the teacher creates using Pinterest, just Pinterest, whether te the teacher creates a, um, a page of pins for students to use um, to follow to help them gather the information. Uh, Digo is something similar, it's also a social bookmarking tool, it's really, really handy. So Pinterest is a favourite of mine too, don't you worry. Um, Video Note, which is this one down here, is actually um, one of the apps you can add to Google, your Google Drive, if you use Google Drive, luckily in my organisation, uh, video, uh, Google is our platform for email, so we have access to all of the apps available on Google Drive, and Video Notes is excellent because what you do is you get the, the YouTube URL of a video or a URL of a video. Ah, thanks Shambles, always great to have you here to help out with that. <laughs> um, so video note, you put your link into the video, it then gets loaded in and you can play and stop and take notes at the same time and as you stop the video it um, puts a time print on where your notes are so you actually know when in the video certain things are happening or your information is being collected. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, EasyBib is just a, um, a way to gather uh, references, particularly if you're working with older children. I think it's really important we start teaching children from as young as year three that, well, you have to show where you found this information and know that you can't just copy it word for word. Uh, okay, so I thought what I might do is take you out again briefly to have a look at Pinterest. Um, let's go there you are. Okay, so what you're looking at hopefully is eventually you'll start seeing and just finding the board. I don't know, I've got lots in. Okay. So you can see here I've got some different boards, lots of different boards. Um, this one here on the left, someone just um, if I'm going a bit too fast. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell if the, um, <laughs> if the, the screen is going too fast. So you can see here I've got Geography Australian system, so I'll click on that board. And what is there uh, are different things that I've collected related to geography in the Australian curriculum. Now, how I can actually use this, and I'm going to show you how I use this on my, my Weebly page. I'm just clicking over to that now. As you can see here, I, this is just a general way of doing it. I haven't got my class site because um, the children have their names and things on there, so I don't want to, to show you that at this point in time. Um, but you can see here I've just created a widget that allows me to embed the Pinterest links or a link to the Pinterest page on, um, on the web page so the children can easily click on that and get to where they need to go. So Pinterest is really good. I love how it's visual. I love how particularly for children, it's really easy to navigate. Coming back to the room. Uh, shambles, I'm disappointed you should have Pinterest everywhere. Okay, so next we come to sorting out and Sorting, the sorting out phase of, of inquiry is where, well, you've just found out all of this information. What do you do with it? How do I figure out whether or not it's what I need? And once I've figured that out, where do I put it? So the tools I've got listed here, um, things like Titan Pad or um, Shambles, you can refresh my mind at what yours is called. 
are really good because they're a collaborative tool that uh, allows children to collaborate, the same with Google Docs, um, and especially if you're in an education system that uses Google as a platform, Google Docs is often the easiest, thanks, shambles. Um, Google Docs is often the easiest because you don't, you can work together and collaborate on, on a document without, um, without having to share email, etc. Um, so Titan Pad is just one of those um, like shambles pad. <laughs> um, there's a few of them out there and basically they're just a, it's just, I guess in some ways it's similar to Google, a Google Doc in that you can all collaborate together at the one time but you can actually see who's writing because you're colour coded and things like that. Edmodo is a, uh, a learning management system in reality but it's a good way to collaborate and put ideas together. And I spoke about video notes before. It's also really useful. I haven't used Evernote, which is the little elephant here, the green one, with young children, uh, but I have had a go at it with the Year 6 group, and it was quite effective for them gathering their ideas together and sharing that. Um, back channel tools are also fantastic. Um, so, and when we're sorting out, we need to be able to sort of put everything out together and say what is it and go back to our questions and say what is it that's going to help me answer these questions and it's at this point as well you need to do particularly when children are learning about inquiry a lot of direct teaching about what information is, is valuable and what information really can be left out so there can be quite a lot of teaching in this section. Now the going further section sometimes Sometimes you need to do go through this section, uh, sometimes you don't because it's here that you sort of reflect on what you've gathered already and say, do I need more information? Have I answered all my questions? And it's really at this point where you use pretty much the same um, processes as before to gather that information and then uh, I put in a couple of other tools like mind map and Poplet because they're mind mapping tools and, it, and it's at this point I often encourage children to create a mind map of their ideas to help them see whether or not they have completed or got all of their ideas sorted out. So using these sorts of tools is, can be really fun. Mind map is another one of those tools that can be connected to your Google Drive and it is quite easy to use. I've had year, year three students using it, so um, it's, it's quite a simple tool to use. Poplet, Poplet Lite is available as an app. Um, no, it's definitely on iPad. I'm not sure if it's on Android because we don't have Androids at school and I tend to use it as a, um, on my desktop if I'm using it at home. Oh yes, Janita, it's I've sat here today thinking, oh, I could add this, oh, I could add that. Oh, so many, <laughs> so many things. Um, and finally, I guess the new one on here is Prezi. Prezi can be used in lots of different ways as a final presentation tool, but it can also help with mind mapping if you want to use a tool that's a little bit more challenging for students who are particularly, uh, I guess, gifted in some ways at using um, gifted at using particular technology because though it can take adults quite a long time to figure out how to use tools like Prezi, children often learn how to use them much, much quicker because they're willing to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, whereas adults are a little bit scared of stuffing it up and looking silly, if that makes sense to everyone. Okay, now when we get to this section, the making and drawing conclusion section, this is where all of that information needs to come together and it needs to be presented in a way that people, other people can understand and show an understanding of what 
you're trying to give to them. So it's where you put together whatever you found in a way that presents it to everyone else. Okay, so there's a few new ones here. Uh, a couple of my personal favourites are Storybird. Lovely, lovely tool. Basically, you're making a, a story and uh, you can either use your own pictures or you can use pictures that are available on, um, on Storybird and you put text with it. So whether that is a long, complicated text or whether it's a, a short, simple text uh, to to share what you've learned. I mentioned Educanon before. Animoto is another fun way of putting together ideas that you can use music with it, you can put video in there, you can put photos, text, lots of different multimedia tools. Um, yeah, I guess you could call them mostly digital storytelling tools, um, but not always to tell a story. For example, picture chart and easily, personally I'm a bigger fan of picture chart than easily, are both infographic makers. So your children can grab the, uh, create infographics based on the information that they have found, um, particularly if you're looking at science or you're looking at uh, a, uh, a history or a geography to topic. Um, you can also use it for mathematics, if you happen to be doing an inquiry into mathematics uh, and a few other things. It's quite a, a fun way of presenting information. Once again, we've got mind map and mind mapping. Uh, Lucid chart, I'll show you in a moment um, what Lucid chart is. Lucid chart is another app that can be uh, added to your Google Drive. And I have used it quite a bit for mind mapping. But there's lots of um, templates, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, Joel, I suggest if you have a Google Drive, go into the Google Drive, connect with Go uh, New and then connect more apps and have a look through there. There is an endless supply of different things to use. <laughs> and it, it, it does sound quite, um, quite crazy, but there is heat. Yeah, and I tell you, um, Jody, that uh, last night I attended a session, the Community Connect session with Shingo, and he, pre he taught us how to use two formative assessment tools that I'd never heard of before. And he, um, he constantly surprises me with the new things he's finding and trying. And there is really endless amounts. But if, I, do, I do tell you, if you have Google Drive, um, go and connect with more apps and have a play with those different tools. Some of them are free full stop. Others, you may have to buy the paid version to get more things, but most of the time, the free, the free is fine. Okay, where was I? Lucid chart. Right, I was going to, <laughs> to show you um, one of my lucid charts. Um, so I'll just share. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll let, give that a second to, to show up for you. Now what you're looking at here is actually, it's not really a mind map. Um, it's kind of like a, it's not really a flow chart either, it's really a, a, think, a way of a thinking tool. So I presented last week, I think it was, at our Community Connect session about, about how we can not only as teachers teach children how to evaluate online tools or online resources, but also as teachers, how do we do that? How do we decide resource, whether resources we're using are um, suitable? So this was really my way of putting all of my, drawing my conclusions 
putting all my information together to show people what I was thinking. Now, as you can see on the left-hand side, you've got all your tools. You've got flowchart tools and containers. But it's really easy to manipulate. It's really just a click and drag. This is actually a template that I just selected. And I just changed it to, my, to suit my needs. So I can make things bigger. I can make things smaller. I can move where things are quite easily just by clicking and moving them around. Oops, I've got to move that back before I forget where it goes. Now, if I wanted to make a, a new chart, I'll just quickly do that since we've got a little bit of time. Um, this is what I was talking about, about the templates. So there's heaps of different templates. Uh, you can choose from any one of these templates. So there's a blank Venn diagram. You've got two, a Venn diagram with two, three, four um, circles. So you've got those. You've got your basic mind map. You've got a sequence diagram. There's really, really heaps and heaps to choose from. Ooh, cause and effect. Let's have a look at one of those. Fishbone, as I call them. This is another great way of gathering thoughts. So it's just loading now. And when, when you choose one of the templates, it basically comes up with the basic bare bones of the template and you just add your text as you please. And as it says on the screen, drop, drop and drag is what you need to do. So, you know, it says problem up here, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a problem. You just simply click, double click to be able to change the font, the text. You can change your font, all of those sorts of things. Um, very, very simple. And if you're setting this up to use with students, you can just click on the share button to share with others. And you can either generate a link, which I might quickly do. Uh, Multi-use, generate link, everyone can edit. Okay, I'll just grab that and <laughs> I'll put it in here and anyone that wants to have a play can have a play. Have a play on there while we're talking. Uh, where are we here? So I'm going to close that. Now, the only problem that you might have if you've got 30 children in here at the same time is um, them yelling at you, so and so is doing this, so and so is doing that. But if you're setting it up for them to work in either pairs or threes, it's much easier. And they can work on it at home then if they want to, which I have found, even with young children, um, is quite good because they really, really want to, to do their best. Okay, so that's Lucid Chart. The other one I wanted to show you while we're here is picture chart. Now, this is just one I've been playing around with. I was using it as a demonstration for our youth teachers to show them that as an assessment, rather than having children create a poster with a whole bunch of information that's just copied from the internet or something like that, I could create something like an infographic to share what they've learned about tropical rainforests. And hopefully this won't take too long to load because it is because it is an infographic that is quite uh, heavy with information. And just go back while that's loading and check the chat. Okay. Uh, Mel, don't worry, it often drops out. <laughs> Sometimes um, we get a little bit lost. And this is taking a lot longer than it should. Spider diagrams. Okay. I might come back to the room while this loads and then I'll bring it back when it's finished. And it will finish as soon as I get on and back to the room. 
So I guess in the making and drawing conclusions section, this is where we really need to help our, our learners understand that this is where you make your big thinking moment and share that because it's in the last part of the, um, the process, the taking action and reflecting, that we want to be able to share this with everybody. So whether they decide that they simply want to put their infographic up in the, in the school or in the workplace, whether they want to create a video that talks about whatever it is they've learned about, you think something like iMovie, maybe they want to write a song and use GarageBand to do that. Some people might simply want to just write about it. Some people are writers, not myself personally. Um, but being able to write about it on something like WordPress or any other blogging platform is really, really important. Uh, things like Google Sites and more recently I've become a fan of uh, I've become a fan of Weebly. It's a really, really simple uh, website creator and there is education.weebly.com where you can set up um, student accounts, a certain number of student accounts for free and then if you want you can set up more by paying. Um, it's where people can use any tool to share what they've learned. Uh, all right. VoiceThread is a favourite of mine where you can produce a uh, response to something, whether it be just a picture or some words or a video or whatever, but then people can respond either by leaving a voice message or a text message to allow that interaction and that's where the reflecting comes in because it's when we when we reflect is when we really really focus on saying this is what I've learned and this is why it's important. Um, and I think that being able to uh, teach children how to reflect is really important. I'm still waiting for that um, <laughs> that picture chart to start up. <laughs> I should have had it loaded earlier. So that that that's my um, my my bad. Uh, so I just saw a question there from Joe. Bubbler. Okay, Bubbler Joe is is a new tool that I haven't used all that much, but it's lots of it looks like lots of fun and I think children could really love it. Uh, basically, they can, um, you, you're using photos, um, you can use Flickr or something like that, um, I think, from memory, and you create a comic strip and you put um, comments, like a, a comic strip, like you bu speech bubbles, and it can be a lot of fun um, and I'm sure children Young children could come up with some fantastic well, learners. I say children. Keep thinking about my my little bunch from last year. But certainly, um, particularly in um, gifted education, Joe, I know that it can be uh, a really, really good tool. I'm just checking this out. Still hasn't loaded. Okay, let's keep going. So that brings us to the end of the, the cycle of, well it's not really a cycle, in inquiry, please remember that I call it a process, I might call it a cycle, but you can jump back and forth between all of those different um, parts of the process at any time. If you find, if you're using this inquiry process with a group of learners, uh, and you're in the uh, sorting out or going further stage and they really haven't haven't got it, you can go back and tune them in again. Let's go back and look at what we're, we, we, we're 
learning about, let's remember this because it's really important. Uh, what I've got here for you is a few links. Um, the orange links are not live, but if you're in the room right now, the blue links down the bottom are live links. So if you wanted to click on those and have a look at them, you're quite welcome to. Um, I'm not sure they work in, in the recording, um, so I'm going to, um, uh, what I will do is I will I'll grab those and put them in the chat, chat anyway, but if you search the pedagogy wheel, wheel or, or, or anything like that, uh, you will find them in there, on the web, they're easy to find there. I'm still looking at my infographic. Will load. Still going. It's always the way technology doesn't work when you want it to. Um, now the the um, the pedagogy wheel, as you the name suggests, is about apps that can be found particularly for uh, iPads, but a lot of them nowadays are. Uh, also suitable for Android. Uh, this is a really, really, really great tool and I think it was updated recently so there's a lot of tools on there that are divided into a similar, similar I think he, uh, the pedagogy wheel, they use the um, Bloom taxonomy. Uh, cool tools for school really recommend to look there. There are huge amounts of resources on that one. Um, and the middle one, researching in primary schools, I think is really important, not just for primary schools. Uh, I think sometimes we forget that learners may not have been taught how to research. Um, so it's good to have that, those basics, those basic ideas well and truly under control. Some more resources. So once again, the blue links are live. So if you're in here now, you can look at those. Um, free technology for teachers. I subscribe to their uh, RSS feed, and there's always great things. I follow them on Facebook. I'm a bit of a stalker. <laughs> um, the second link is actually to one of my scoop it. Um, my, one of my scoop it, uh, scoops and it's there that I, I gather lots of tools that I, I find on scoop it that people are using and finding so if you want to have a look there <coughs> excuse me um, for tools that are coming up though I've been a bit busy since the end of December so I haven't done much on my scoop it recently but it's well worth a, a look because there's lots there and 321 free technology tools for teachers, definitely worth a look. Some of the tools I certainly would recommend you having a go at by yourself before you bring them to children because some of them are difficult to use. Some of them do require a lot of support to begin with. Uh, so don't just jump in there and pick the first one you see because you may be a little bit disappointed because the kids can't use it to start with, but certainly um, evaluate those tools before you start using them. So, uh, I've only got one more slide to go, so are there any questions before I, I keep going? I'm still waiting for that, sadly for the um, <laughs> picture chart to open. I'm a bit disappointed that it's taking so long. I'm not sure why. Um, I might try one of the other ones. No, no we're going to. No, that's okay, Katrina. This session for me was really just about sharing, sharing tools because I know as a teacher you sort of hear about all these things and, and you go, oh, I want to try that, but you need to know that they're going to work. Um, but you won't know they'll work until you get out there and have a go at using them because uh, it's 
it's really, really um, important that as learners, as teachers and as learners, we ourselves take the time to learn new things. I managed to get one of my picture charts to work, <laughs> finally. So I, I will share that and show you briefly. So this one is one that I, I uh, set up as a demonstration. Um, so how this works is you have your titles, and these are all just basically text boxes, or blocks as they call them. So here I can change the block by typing in um, state, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Uh, if I want to change numbers, I simply, most of these are just text boxes. So I'll just move down the bottom where I know I've got a graph. Here we go. I put in this graph. So if I double click on this graph here, you can see down the bottom that there's a, and it's interactive at the moment because if you don't, if you keep it as a, an online thing, it, it does remain interactive, but if you download it, obviously it's not. But you can see when I'm hovering over frogs, it talks about there's 23 frogs, 46% of reptiles, which is 50. Um, birds is 33%, so this is percentage of Australian animals in the tropics. So if I double click on that, it will actually open that graph, which I've actually put on top of a couple of other elements just to make a point. Uh, you can see that it actually comes up with the spreadsheet the word I'm looking for. Uh, and the number obviously has been converted into a percentage over here. On the left hand side, I can change the um, I can change how the graph looks, so that's changed it to a bar graph. I don't think a line graph will really work, not really, it's not very pretty. Uh, I could change it to an icon matrix, which hopefully it will do fairly quickly, there you go. So obviously the blue are the birds, the yellowish colour are the reptiles, the green are the frogs. I can change it to a, a donut, which is similar to a pie chart anyway. So you can do all that. You can also import your own data if you've already collected data on a, a spreadsheet somewhere else. You can import that. Um, the dynamic data, I haven't looked at. I've only just noticed that. I mean, it tells you what to do. It's how do you have to link it to a Google spreadsheet. Um, yeah, but it's here that you can just make your decisions about how you want it to look and whether or not um, whatever suits you. Oh, it's quite pretty. <laughs> I'll choose that one. So making your own infographics, not only lots of fun, but also a great way for children to condense a lot of information into a smaller idea without having to use blocks and blocks of text. So you can see why it would be fantastic, particularly for science or mathematics um, or history, geography, all of those sorts of learning areas. Okay, come back soon. Yeah, very useful tool. I, like I said, I personally prefer picture chart because it's a little bit easier to use with younger children. Obviously my perspective as a primary school teacher is that I am focused on younger children, but also on being able to teach teachers who are not always tech savvy um, how to use tools. So I tend to choose tools that are fairly simple to use uh, and easy to teach because I know I will have to teach teachers how to teach children how to use them as well. Um, I don't. I, I like easily myself. I do use it if I'm making infographics. I do use it myself because it uh, it allows a few more uh, options. But for for general purposes, I really do like um, picture chart because it's quite simple and very the, the, the templates are very very good and fully set out. Yeah, to me that's totally transferable from well maybe not preschool, but definitely um, I would say year two to to adults because um, like I said they're quite easy to use and simple to use. And when, when you're thinking of free tools, there's lots out there that you don't have to pay for.
Thanks. So I've got my last slide there, which is just my contact details. Um, if you have any questions about tonight or you want to have a look at some of my tools that I have collected, um, please go to my Weebly site. I've got most of my uh, Symbaloo pages set up. I'm still getting all my Pinterest boards onto those uh, onto onto my Weebly site, but I think all of my um, Symbaloo uh, links are there. And I have recently started creating a couple of new boards focused on assessment tools, so particularly for teachers and those people that need to assess. Um, I really recommend having a bit of a look. So thank you everyone. Uh, I'm really grateful for you coming tonight and I appreciate uh, your patronage and thank you to those people who are looking after the recording. I'd just like to say you know, thank you very much indeed, Ness. That was really excellent and lots and lots of information there and lots for us to go back to. Um, and lots for people who tune in later on to learn too. Um, and I would like everybody to um, appreciate Lisa's session by giving her a round of applause in the um, applause icon button there. Um, and thank you very much indeed. Um, we'll be moving over um, very quickly if possible to the next room. I've put the link there um, for you to, to use um, because the next session will be starting at 8 o'clock. Um, so thank you very much indeed. Are there any, any other comments or anything that anyone would like to say before we go? Okay, I'll hand the, hand the microphone back to Ness. Um. Thanks everyone, I'll stop the recording now.